The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and a little bit of a reprieve right now to the upside. Haven't had many of these folks, especially since we got that CPI print uh, a couple weeks ago right now. You have the S&Ps up 39 points right now, trading at 37.09. NASDAQ 100, you're up 1.4% right now. But boy, you put this thing on a chart, right? You talk about a wave up, a wave down since June 16th. About three and a half months, all the indices, right, trading up dramatically to the August 16th highs. We pull back, you get the CPI print. Now, two weeks ago today, folks, okay, two weeks ago Tuesday, you had the NASDAQ 100 at 13,000, basically a straight trip down to 11,250. You're catching a 1.4% pop today. We'll see if that holds throughout the day. As our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young. Couldn't be younger, man. We haven't even opened the trading uh, yet officially, which happens in 23 minutes from right now. Dow up about 8 tenths percent. Russell up 1.2 percent. As I mentioned in the, the 9 o'clock newscast, you really got cryptos rocking, man, with Bitcoin up 1000 bucks almost. You got Ethereum up about 4.4 percent, approaching 1400 Commodities, gold catches a little bit of a bid up to 1650 after being down to 1627 and then we have, where's crude? There it is. Crude, quite the sell-off yesterday, man. Down to 76.25 overnight. We're trading right now back above 78 at 78.02. And I talked about notes and bonds, man. The movement, it just doesn't stop right now. We got the 10-year, 3.86%, right? Now, you're off of where we were towards the close of action yesterday. As we were approaching 3.9%, I think when my dad finished up his program, it's at 3.89, something like that, right near the 3.9% number. You catch a little bit of a bid. I say a little bit of a bid, man. You just popped a full point from where you were at 4.30 yesterday to where we were. And I'm talking about where we were just at 70.45 this morning. Since then, though, we've sold off a bit. Still 3.866% right now. Uh, yields across the board. Uh, I'm going to pull them up right now. Why not? We'll take a look at those yields. And you talk about some high yields, folks. I talked about it yesterday. You got cash hang hanging around. I would make sure you're putting it to use because you're talking about on a three month basis, you're getting three and three, a three and a third percent, basically. On a six month basis, you're getting four percent, man. Uh, and on a yearly, you're up. 4.11 on the two year, you're at four and a quarter percent, 10 year 3.86, and the 30 year 3.73 percent up and down the line. All right, yeah, let's jump to home prices because this one's just out. Cooled in July at the fastest rate in the history of the SP Case Schiller Index. The 10 city comp was up 14.9 percent year over year and down 17.4 percent in June. 20 city comp gained 16.1 percent down 18.7% from the previous month. Tampa, Miami, Dallas, highest annual gains among the 20 cities, 31.8% in Tampa. Video game style numbers, man. Miami was 31.7 uh, and Dallas at 24.7 percentage points. Doesn't mean they can't cool. Doesn't mean they can't pull back a bit, man. When you've got a 31% rise, folks, in the housing price, and then you got um, unemployments, through the roof, I mean, imagine it, right? That's about 33%. So that means if you have a $300,000 house in Tampa, it's worth 400,000 today. And if you were paying a, a loan of 3.5% on 300,000, you're gonna be paying a loan of 7.5% on 400,000. You can see how that's gonna weigh dramatically. Don't even have to pull up the payments. They are a huge difference in a big way. Uh, but there's gonna be divergences in different cities, folks, but it's gonna matter where these where these mortgage rates are because I don't think a lot of people thought that by September we would be pushing mortgage rates at greater than 7.5 percent not sure how that translates at all into uh, that housing market and rents of course a big factor and the other factor that goes in that right very difficult to buy a house right now okay 
A lot of people don't want to sell because they're locked into mortgage rates that they're not going to be able to get back anytime soon, okay? And they will be able to get them back, but anytime soon is debatable. But uh, if the Fed really is tanking the economy, okay, as many people suspect, well, they'll have to come in and lower rates again, which is why you have uh, the short end spiking so dramatically right now, but you go out a little bit longer, there's a little bit of fear that the economy may have some problems that will cause the Fed to have to decrease those rates yet again. But homeowners aren't going to want to sell, man. Okay, you're not going to want to sell when you have that interest rate locked in because on a monthly basis, you're not going to get anything close to that right now. So why are you selling, right? You're going to sell your home that you're locked in on X dollars. Now, if you think there's a huge pullback coming to the tune of 20, 30%, yeah, you can make up on it on the equity. But still, doing the simple math, okay, you're giving up a mortgage that you cannot get back. So people aren't going to want to sell it. So that's going to prevent... Uh, supply coming on the market, it's already a tight market, and then you have the affordability of homeowners, now investors, that don't have to go to market for a mortgage that might matter, but everybody, folks, my dad likes to say, you're only worth what your signature is. Okay, even big businesses, big real estate businesses especially, they love debt, okay? That number all matters. Even if you're coming in and buying it for cash, you're not usually holding it in cash in perpetuity, right? You're buying it in cash. Maybe you're securitizing uh, that asset at some point, however it is, okay? Uh, you're going to private funding, whatever it is. They're seeking higher interest rates across the board. It's all going to matter. You're seeing it on that month-to-month -month number. Uh, on a yearly basis, though, pretty remarkable the way the numbers are still coming in. And uh, Tampa, 31.8% as we got a hurricane rolling into town, man. We'll jump to that one. Why not? Let's jump to our hurricane because uh, you can't deny even more. Uh, yeah, even Bloomberg's got it up there. Now, there's a beautiful shot of Tampa Bay. And I tell you, man, the skyline in Tampa Bay. I wonder when this picture was taken. Okay, that's September 25th, so it's pretty recent. It is just rocking, man. Between the development with Vinick and Bill Gates pumping billions of dollars into the skyline in Tampa, man, we got new buildings for apartments, for retail, for everything going up in Tampa. Uh, and we got a storm rolling in now, man. That's the beautiful Tampa Bay up here. If you can see my screen on the top left, uh, I got a duplex in Tampa, a little bit further down south, and I'm even going to pull up some of those evacuation zones to let people know, because I know we got people in the Tampa area, along with all over the country and the globe, and thanks for listening. Uh, but we do have a lot of Florida listeners as well as being here for the years. And yeah, take this one seriously, folks, because it seems like it's coming. I'm a little inland right now in Bartow and Lakeland, so I'm not in one of the evacuation zones. But I believe, at least in Hillsborough, evacu evacuation zone A is uh, mandatory evacuation. Evacuation zone B is recommended, uh, and it's a serious deal because the storm surge we could get in Tampa, especially if you're anywhere near the water, hopefully it just meanders a bit. Maybe it uh, weakens a bit, but right now things looking pretty ominous. So we're going to be live on the air today, probably all day. We'll see how the day goes, right? Uh, and tomorrow, uh, we're probably not going to be on the air tomorrow because it's going to be quite a scene in St. Petersburg, Florida. I mean, we're only like a couple streets from the water, folks. We're in a, an apartment building. Uh, and so we are not on the ground floor, but we're only a couple streets from the water, our office in downtown St. Pete, uh, let alone what's going to happen in Tampa, et cetera. But Financial Services Hub empties ahead of Hurricane Ian. So what's going on is already in Tampa, folks. All the schools are closed today. They're closed tomorrow because a lot of the schools are shelters. Uh, a lot of the schools need to take some time and get set up so even if the storm isn't as bad as some fear maybe if the weather isn't here today people saying why the schools closed they gotta get those shelters ready to make sure they're ready when people show up basically today tonight to uh, endure that storm tomorrow stay tuned folks we're gonna have kevin hanks coming back from td ameritrade network we'll be right back in three minutes Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. We got the S&Ps, folks, up by 45 points right now. And let me make sure. Do we have our man Kevin on the line for my producer? I think we may. We'll see. Uh, I'm waiting for him to let me know. But we got the S&Ps up 45. We got the NASDAQ 100 up 170, folks. Markets catching a bid, to say the least. Uh, and we sure do. We got our man Kevin Hinks on the line. Let's jump over. Folks, you can check out Kevin every trading day right here on Tiger TV, Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network at 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White. The team at TD Ameritrade Network, they break down the day's market action, walk you through some hypothetical trade setups uh, as we come into earnings season, kicking things off in a couple weeks. But boy, we got some action today to the upside. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. You know, uh, this is an interesting morning we're having here. Charles Evans speaking very early this morning before, uh, about probably before six, just after 6 a.m. Eastern time, talked about. He's cautiously optimistic, Tommy, that the U.S. can avoid a recession. And he thinks by next March, which is six months out, that all the hard work will be done. Without, of course, he did uh, mention that without another shock to, to the U.S. economy, of course. So I think the market has taken a lot of comfort in that right now, Tommy, that since stocks look about six months out, if in six months we're going to be through the, the lion's share of this, that's a pretty positive uh, take by Charles Evans this morning. So the market really feeding up that. Now, Tommy, the market was oversold to start with, right? The dollar's overbought. Yields are overbought. Bonds and notes are all oversold. And, and so if, and three of the four indices were officially in oversold territory. So a snapback here is not a real shocker. You were just looking for the news to make it happen, and Charles Evans gave it to us. How long does this last? I have no idea, Tommy. 
<laughs> uh, quite a little reprieve this morning. I got the chart up on the Thinkorswim platform, even the S&P futures. Uh, it's been almost a one-way trip since August 16th. We got an acceleration into that CPI two weeks ago. Not sure where those 200 to 250 S&P points came from, from 3,900 to about 4,150 when we came into that number. But boy, since then, it's been a straight drop until last night's close almost. We got a reprieve this morning. And you talked about, so it's interesting, Kevin, right? Even from the last Fed meeting. So they're probably going to go up by a point and a quarter by year end, right? So they got to go 75 and then they got to go 50 maybe. And then maybe they'll go 25 in the last year. And I said to myself, okay, hold on. Well, even though that sounds like a lot, we just got 75, 75, 75. So now we're saying, hey, guess what? Right now, if the data goes the way it is, you're going to get basically a taper down from 75, 50, a quarter, and then maybe you pause from there. Uh, the data has to line up, of course, for that to be the case. But in my head, I started saying, okay, you know, we're in some dicey territory here in terms of the market already pricing a lot of negative action. Um, and if that is the path they take, well, boy, it's already almost October, and if we're going to get a point and a quarter by year end, and then maybe we get you know another quarter point or something, we're almost there. As in, kind of what you're saying, which is what Evans was saying, as in, maybe we're 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 reaching. I mean, they can't raise seventy five forever, can they? You know, but but it's it's uh, we're we're forward in that progress, and maybe that's some of the speak that's going to start to come out. Uh, we got some action in cryptos this morning, Kevin. Everything kind of rocking. Bitcoin up $1,000. Uh, but what's your take on notes and bonds on that similar category? Is that just the same reaction to everything? Because we got quite a spike overnight. You had the 10-year trading from 111 up to 112. And then just like that, we've given up almost half of that game just that quickly since about 8 a.m., Kevin. It's traded from 112 to 111.15. I, I'm a little bewildered from that pullback. What's your take on, on the note and bond? Is that just volatility or, or what there? I think there's some stubbornness there for sure, Tommy. I think uh, watching how this plays out throughout the day, but you're right. Yields were lower and the U.S. dollar was significantly more lower than, than it is now. They've all come back to, closer to unchanged and yields are now up, Tommy. So, uh, what you know, we're, we're going to watch those during the day. Those will press stocks, although now, you know, the tenure is, is teetering back around up and down for the day. So now I've got it down, you know, trading right about 3.87%. So, yeah, that, that cool. dollar yield, uh, you know, looking at those as your triggers for the market and what it's doing today is going to be critical. Uh, crude oil's up a dollar thirty. That's you know, that's interesting, but not, not going to catch anyone's attention. It's still, Tommy, it's still the U.S. dollar and it's stinginess. Not only it's, it's moved to this level, but it's stinginess up here to come off that level, Tommy. And unless we get some news from a little more dovish from the U.S. or a little more hawkish from foreign, foreign uh, governments, you know, that, that dollar is going to remain strong. So yeah, there, there, there's a lot of, balls in the air that have to play out, Tommy. It's going to get interesting. It's going to be a bumpy fall for, for, for these markets. That's and, and that case I presented, man, saying maybe we're nearing the finish line, right? It's like part of that was it's like time flies. So we're coming into the final quarter of the year. It's going to be October in no time. And we know, folks, three months flies like nothing. But boy, that might be a very volatile three months, man, as we get the data points. Now, Kevin, we're coming into October. Uh, earnings season kicks off probably what, you know, the second week, something like that of October, October 14th. Um, they start coming in maybe with the banks. But in terms of inflation data, right, that's really going to drive, you know, the Fed and everything going on. Is the market just going to wait for, you know, the non-farm payrolls that are going to come in, the CPI that's going to come in? Are those going to be monumental events as they have been? I, I you know, what, what do you look for on those? Well, I think anything connected to inflation, like we'll get income and outlays on Friday and the PCE data within that income and outlays data. I think that'll be crucial for what, what, what we're looking at on Friday, because I mean, any look, any news on inflation, uh, I think this market not only will react, it'll overreact to Tommy. Sure. And if you look at some of the consensus for the numbers that we have coming out on Friday, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're interesting. Right. And we're, we're going to let that play out over the next couple of days. But, yeah, income and outlays will, will be vital. And then a week from now, then we'll get non-farm payrolls. Tommy, some of the PCE data, you know, it's barely coming down. The core, 
again, in the PC, the consensus for the core PCE year over year is up from last month. See, that's not giving anybody any relief. I mean, the year over year PC is down slightly. So uh, it looks like some of the consensus for this month's uh, personal income and outlays is firm to slightly higher, Tommy. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens with some of these numbers, really, like you mentioned it, over the next three months, because the Fed has hiked so much, you could make the argument you got to give the economy a little bit of time to react to the moves they're making. Um, but boy, time is flying, and it's had some time, you know, and that's going to be the argument on the other side. If we persist here coming into year end, what do we do uh, if the numbers just kind of aren't lining up? And we, we get to find out, folks, but it's, it's going to be an eventful one. Now, Kevin, we got a hurricane bearing down on Tampa, man. Hopefully everyone's good and it steers left and weakens. Uh, we're going to be live today. But, folks, we might be off the air tomorrow. So you know what you should do? Kevin Hinks, they're going to be on the air. You can check out, even if it's not on Tiger TV, because we'll see how our offices are. We might have to shut it down. But, folks, you can always check out the TD Ameritrade Network right in the Think or Swim platform, or you can just pull it up at tdameritradenetwork.com uh, and check that out all day. Great programming, let alone our man Kevin Hinks at 12 noon Eastern time. And with that in mind, Kevin, what are you talking about coming up today? We'll look at three names. Remember, we're at the end of se an earnings season, so we'll look at Disney, we'll look at Domino's Pizza, and we'll look at Exxon Mobil. So Ooh, everyone- Three good with, ones, with, Kevin. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. I may not talk to you tomorrow, but have a great one, have a safe one, man. Bye-bye, Tommy. In a Thanks time so much. Booming Bye. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. DFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. Positive by 38 points. We back off a bit from where we were higher at about 3.45 a.m. this morning, maybe 4 a.m. we'll call it. Also up at that level just prior to coming on the air at about 8.45 a.m. this morning. Market's given up about 20 points just like that. We'll see if it holds. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 1.3%. Dow gives it up a little bit as well, though. These markets, I mean, you're talking about almost 200 points from where we were at, folks, at 8.45 this morning. Okay, so be careful. Market just gave up 200 points in the Dow from where we were at, and the S&P just gave up 20 points from where we were at. You're talking about 45 minutes coming into the opening bell as we get a little bit of acceleration lower. Crude, backing off to about 77.82 right now, and you jump to gold, up $9 at 16.42. We jump over to the dollar index right now, DXY pushing 114, 113.90. We check out the euro, euro US dollar right now, 96.20. We jump to the dollar yen. Look at that. So much for the intervention uh, over in Japan. That thing drove from 145.89 down to 140.34. And just like that, you're up to 144.64. Uh, so much for the intervention, man. You put that thing on a daily basis, just chopping around at highs. And we'll see. Maybe that's building a base. Maybe that's uh, an area of resistance that's going to be tough to get above 145. There's your bar when they intervened. And uh, you just made it all up just like that, right back to that level at 145 and the dollar yen. All right, jumping around to some of the maps, folks, to give you a little bit of a glimpse of what's going on in Tampa and Florida. Uh, so obviously, this storm, it's a big one. The way it's rolling into the west coast of Tampa, doesn't the west coast of Florida, does not happen often. Uh, a quick glimpse here, okay, of what you're dealing with in terms of, let me make sure I get this map up correctly, how dramatic this could be. So this is Hillsborough County and their evacuation zones, okay? Now, South Tampa, which is where I have a duplex, uh, is this area right here, okay? Dips down right in the bay, kind of. That's that's the South Tampa is what they call it. Uh, and you can see, folks, now, fortunately, when I bought this place even, okay, uh, my place is somewhere right in this orange here, okay? I'm just north of Gandy. That's Gandy Boulevard, okay, which is a bridge over to Pinellas. And I'm away from the coast enough that I'm not technically in a flood zone, although I'm literally just outside of some of these red evacuation zone A's. And I'm not as worried about my property, folks, but I wanted to give you a quick glimpse of the devastation that is possible if we ever get a storm surge that's talked about if it lines up. Because, I mean, you're talking about Davis Island, Harbor Island, McDill Air Force Base. So many homes in the South Tampa area. Pomacy, a beautiful area in South Tampa. Now this, you look on the eastern side of the bay, so many. Apollo Beach, right? Beautiful area. You go down to Gulf City, okay? Right near Sun City down there. Now that is Hillsboro. You jump to Pinellas, where our office is in St. Petersburg. Now Pinellas has mandatory evacuations for A, B, and C, and mobile homes almost in all counties, I believe, that the hurricane's going to hit. Uh, but send us some white light, folks, because you can see that Zone A alone, okay, now they got B and C in Pinellas in there. Zone A, man, I mean, look at all these streets in here, okay? These are streets with homes, folks. Uh, some of them beautiful on the water, some of them pretty far inland for all intents and purposes, but when you're dealing with a bay where you're so close to the level of water, okay, and then you talk about the coast, of course, as we know. Uh, now, St. Petersburg, to give you a glimpse of where our office is, uh, let me find it real quick here. We are at 300 4th Ave South. There's 4th Ave South right here, 300. We're right about here, I think. Yeah, there's 4th Ave South. We're at 300 on the three blocks, so we're right here is where we are. So you can see... You know, only a few streets away, but depending on where you are, okay, pay attention to these folks because we could see some real storm surge. And unfortunately, on Florida, you got so much action on the coast, man, that there are so many people that have homes, businesses, et cetera, on the coast. Uh, it's a scary deal, folks, in terms of the weather, the wind, et cetera. Uh, and you back things up. I mean, Tampa, you see all over the place in terms of just zone A. And I believe in Tampa right now you just have a uh, – Zone A is a required evacuation, mandatory, and Zone B is recommended. So we'll see what happens, folks, but stay safe out there. You know, if you're in one of those zones, don't risk it, man. 
life is too beautiful to risk it because you can't fight a storm surge, man, with what you get. You know, you got eight foot, 10 foot, 15 foot storm surge right now. Um, possible? Yeah, that's something you do not want to be near, folks. Many deaths, especially in Florida, from hurricanes can do with the storm surge that can roll in off of the coast. Okay, let's get back to the market right now. We're going to jump to Goldman and BlackRock, and they are souring on stocks. Uh, maybe a little late to the party, but BlackRock says, shun most stocks as recession, not priced yet. Goldman downgrades global shares to underweight over three months. Uh, yeah, and not surprising, folks, especially when you get the competition for yields right now in terms of man you know do i really want to be in stocks right now when i can go over to yields and get three to four percent risk-free that's a battle for stocks right now folks uh current levels of equity valuations may not fully reflect related risks and might have to decline further to reach a market trough that's goldman uh strategist writing in a note on monday the market implied recession probability has risen to above 40% following the recent bond sell-off, which historically has indicated elevated equity drawdown risk, they wrote. It's all tied together, man, when you put it together uh, out there. So that's what Goldman's out there saying. And then you got the bond king himself, Gunlick. He's buying after the worst US, U.S. Treasury doubt route in decades. He welcomes Tuesday's rally in a tweet. Uh, one major investor who thinks the world's worst global bond route in decades is creating a buying opportunity. And folks, it doesn't mean you got to like barrel in all your savings into it. Okay. You could step into this on a scaling process, right? Ten-year yields are up in 2022 by more than any prior year in terms of the elevation. Uh, now the capital, okay, if you're trading those for capital, boy, they've gotten decimated because the yields were so low to kick things off right now, okay? Uh, but, yeah, uh, gun luck's out there buying, and, and I would say that you should be checking it out as well if that's something that you are interested in, especially if you are uh, maybe nearing retirement, you got a retirement portfolio, right? Um, but, yeah, I, I it's, it's not surprising, folks, because yields are not going to go up forever because if they push it too far... They're going to crash the economy and they'll have to lower them at some point. So, you know, when you see yields where they are, you see these numbers, um, you know, biggest jump in yields since 1962 on a yearly basis. Right. We get the 10 year. We get the two year challenging levels we haven't seen in a while. Um, yeah, I would pay attention to that in a big way. So they manage one hundred and seven billion dollars. Uh, been a long time, but he's been a buyer recently. Look at this market as it pops again. We're going to pull up those notes and bonds real quick. I mean, folks, you put this on a five-year weekly, okay? If you like the 10-year at 140, you're going to love it at 110. If you liked it at 129 to end 2019, yes, uh, you're going to love it at 111. October of 2018, it was still at 118, right? You got to keep going back, okay? We're talking about back to levels that this hasn't been trading at since 2007, and you pull up the 30-year, okay? Now, that's a scary one, folks, in terms of we broke below that trend line. Where does the 30-year go from here? It's a free fall. We're at 126, down 16 ticks today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps pushing highs right now for the day. We're up almost 60 points. That's 1.6%. How about the NASDAQ 100? Up more than 2% right now. We got the Dow charging higher, making up those 200 points it gave up. We're up 363, up a one and a quarter percent. Bitcoin's up 1,100 bucks. Crude up $1.80. Uh, $1 Interesting to see how the storm may uh, impact uh, some of the crew, crew, no real impact yet, man. Lower prices coming at you. Gold contract catches a bid as well, up about $12 right now for gold. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how the day goes, folks. It's going to be fluid. I just talked with my dad even over the break, um, and we may shut down the offices even a little bit early today just to give people the ability to get safe. You know, employees, producers, uh, Jacob, Al, the whole team. Uh, so we'll see. It's going to be fluid. Uh, we'll let you know on the air. We'll do our best with the newsletters uh, as well, uh, but we got a storm rolling right into us, so we'll see what happens as we get into that number uh, later today. But it's going to be fluid, and I imagine that we will at least uh, be live up until at least about noon at this time, at least. Uh, and we'll see. As fast market rolls around, we may just roll into a replay at that point. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's fluid, as you know, and this thing, it's going to roll in for uh, the the... Dicey part is that it might actually just sit there and stall over us, which would be a tough deal, man, if we get that type of a stall with rainfall, water, et cetera, uh, let alone the winds and so forth. But we got some time, hoping for the best, and we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, so at some point today, we'll see how that goes, but just a uh, announcement that at some point we may shut it down even early because you get into Tuesday night, man, things are going to be getting a little dicey already. And I'm going to pull up the NOAA chart to end the program, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit of stocks before we do that, folks. Let's get back into it. Uh, JP Morgan, they're all about dining. So they got a new DoorDash credit card. Uh, a credit card with DoorDash is the latest addition to their ever-growing group of co-brand deals with a pandemic favorite that has continued to gain against rivals. Now, We'll pull up the chart of DoorDash. And the reason why I bring this up is continue to gain against rivals, right? Is how the article is written. This thing is in a max pain situation, folks. 257 down to 5285. Now, for a while, we had Uber in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, okay? We did get out on a small loss. We had a profit at one point, unfortunately, gave it back. What I'll say is if you want exposure to that market, I would look for Uber versus DoorDash, okay? Because at least Uber has the ride delivery business as well. 
because the food delivery business, man, even chatting with friends, we're all aware of inflation, okay? But these gig economy deals, now, if you take an Uber to the airport, you really aren't splurging, right? That's a necessary uh, expense that you need to pay, okay? Uh, it's not a... Um, it's not a, an expense that you can afford not to take, right? If you're taking a cab to the airport, an Uber to the airport, maybe you're taking one dining out at night, maybe you don't want to drink, maybe you're just using it as opposed to using a car, right? Whatever you're doing, that one, you're, you kind of have to pay the fee. But these deals with food delivery, man, the cost that you're paying is not worth it sometimes. And I even on Uber Eats, man, I ordered Uber Eats. I ordered Chipotle on Uber Eats a couple weeks ago, okay? We got three meals, folks, three meals, and nothing crazy on those meals either. I'm talking about, you know, a burrito, a burrito bowl. For all intents and purposes, I got three burrito bowls, okay? All said and done, it was more than $60 to get delivered from Chipotle. I was paying more than $20 more per a burrito to get delivered, it's not, I, I, you can't do it, man, okay? So DoorDash has got some problems because what's going on is, is that that's their only deal. And food delivery is so expensive because inflation has risen that you're paying a percentage on a rising percentage, right? So if the food delivery bill was usually $10, well, you're paying 10 to 20%, well, that's 12 bucks, not bad, okay? Well, now it's $15, you're paying 10 to 12, well, now it's 18 bucks, right? It's a percentage on top of a rising percentage of inflation. And as one of my friends put it, uh, the VC discount is over as in the venture capital discount is over. When these companies were just in VC land, okay, they were raising venture capital money, okay, private equity money, they were operating at severe losses in order to gain customers. You didn't see people going online saying, hey, it cost me more than $60 to order three burritos from Chipotle, because that's not how they would have become giants with so many customers, okay? That has ended, it's over. They're not in the business, especially in this market, okay, of subsidizing losses to gain customers at that degree anymore. So what are they doing? They're raising prices, okay, and they're raising prices to a level in this inflationary environment is going to be very difficult because uh, that is a real luxury for a lot of people, okay? I mean, the joke online, right, is, you know, you, you're ordering food from like, you know, 100 feet down the road because you're too lazy to walk out, right? People just aren't going to do that, let alone just get in the car, man, and go pick some up if you have to, if you're going to save that money, if you're cutting every corner. And a lot of people, folks, are starting to cut every corner because they have to. Um, you know, I talked about it yesterday, whether it's gas prices. Now, gas prices is going down, but the sticker shock of insurance prices in Florida, man, you talk about Biden gas. Well, how about DeSantis insurance? OK, because that number alone talked about it yesterday. Pretty sure my insurance bill, folks, uh, over $7,000 this year, $7,000, okay? And I say lazy, you're talking about, that's not lazy in a bad way, man. You know what I mean? Um, as in, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to sit on the couch, man, and get a Chipotle burrito delivered to you, okay? But it has reached a point that mentally, I think it's very hard to rationalize for people, which that's just myself speaking, man. But, you know, I got three kids in the house sometimes, I do want to be a little lazy because I got busy days, man. I got busy nights. I got busy mornings all around, right? I'm not ordering three burrito bowls on Chipotle again for over 60 bucks, folks, because it just feels dirty <laughs> paying that type of money for three burrito bowls. I mean, that's what you can go eat out at, right? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we got going on. Yeah. My dad's, my dad's texting me as we speak to get a quote from citizens. And I do. I have to get a quote from citizens uh, no matter what. But Hey, it's a tough deal. Citizens is the insurer of last resort. And uh, no matter what happens, man, we are dealing with a hurricane that may make things even worse. But back to it. Uh, DoorDash, if I'm looking for these two businesses, folks, uh, if I'm looking at DoorDash, you're probably better off in Uber. And that's just from a fundamental take because most people aren't taking Ubers because they're, quote unquote, uh, 
and not lazy in a bad way, you know, just because they don't feel it. Most time you're taking that ride hailing because that's something you need to do to get to point A to point B for whatever reason. Uh, food delivery, that is just something that is cutting time. Most people have the ability to go pick up that food if they want to. It would just be easier if it could be delivered. But the cost that it comes with now is something that is really hard to rationalize for a lot of people, especially when you're looking for easy ways to save money right now, right? It's not necessarily that everybody's in deep financial trouble, there's a huge recession, but we're all aware that costs are rising. And if you have the ability to save some money here and there, I think you're gonna take it. And that on DoorDash specifically, that's their entire business, man. And that is here to stay, but not like it was during the pandemic when this thing was trading at 257. So that got me started. JP Morgan, they're putting out a credit card. Uh, but you know, it made me laugh a little bit when you look at that line. Um, in terms of, what do they say? Um, continued to gain against rivals. Well, the stock continues to gain to the negative side for DoorDash. Stay tuned, folks. S&P is giving it up a bit. We'll come right back. I'm going to take a look at that NOAA app as well. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up by 46 points, NASDAQ up by 189. So stay tuned, folks. Our man Basil Chapman, he is coming up live next. I believe we're going to have our man Steve Rhodes live at 11 o'clock. We'll make a determination middle of the day uh, what we do here. Uh, interesting day in the markets for sure. We'll see how our day in Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, Clearwater shapes up going forward. Checking out that map, as I mentioned. So this is Noah talking about the cone. And you can see, man, it is bearing down on that West Coast. Right now, you got Hurricane Ian right over Cuba, okay, and where they put it. Now, here's there's a, I mean, Noah, folks, if you've never been to the website, check it out. Very familiar in, in Tampa, Florida, uh, as we pull it up. This one is when the winds arrive. OK, so you can see the lines of now. These are all estimates, man. Keep track of it. OK, but this is where the winds are expected to arrive. So you can see by Tuesday at 8 p.m. They're coming Tampa Bay area Wednesday, 2 a.m. You're going to start seeing uh, I believe these are tropical storm force winds is when those are expected to arrive. So middle of the night, Wednesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday, it's going to roll in. The cone is right there. Uh, and you look at there's your interactive cone. OK, in terms of where it's ripping in, you can see the area that it stretches. Tampa, St. Petersburg, right in the middle of it right now, man. And the last one I'm going to end with, okay, and this one was tweeted, uh, heavy rainfall. This might be the tough one, man. As I said, the storms might kind of stall over. Check out, okay, the little inlet, unfortunately, man. That's not what you want, folks. That is 15 to 20 inches of rainfall in the Tampa, St. Petersburg area. That is a foot and a half of rainfall, let alone a storm surge that is possible right there. Uh, and that was just tweeted at 8.23 a.m. this morning. So they're constantly updating these, but I believe that was for the 8 a.m. update that they put that out. Uh, so be careful, folks. You see the whole area. You're talking about rainfall. You're talking about storm surges. You're talking about hurricane winds. Stay safe out there. Take the precaution. We'll all be back here uh, on Thursday, Friday, Monday, whatever it is, nice and safe. So be safe out there, please, if you're in the area. Take the precautions necessary, folks. You don't want to get caught too late. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next to the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got our man Steve Rhodes with the Trader's Edge after that. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. We got the S&Ps up 1.1% today. Stay tuned for Basil up next. Have a great one, folks.